so this conference party. will now be recorded. Thanks, Aaron. I forgot to hit record. Okay. Good morning. This is Sarah Crom with Space Coast TPO, and welcome to the last of our eight series of webinars for the St. John's River to Sea Loop Virtual Summit. We really appreciate everyone hanging in with us virtually through the global pandemic. And while it would have been wonderful to get to hang out with you all day back in March for a face-to-face -face summit, I think it's been a lot of fun to get to have this weekly time with everyone. So we really appreciate everyone who's attended, everyone who's presented, and without this you know, amazing Florida Trail community, this wouldn't have been possible. With that being said, we do wanna take a moment to thank our sponsors and organizers. We have the City of Titusville, Playlinda Brewing Company, the American Planning Association Florida Chapter, Titus Landing, Coldwell Banker Coast Realty, Lisa Mosier, or excuse me, Lisa Mosier with Coldwell Banker Coast Realty, Ocean Wild Ocean Market, Bike Florida, Days Inn by Wyndham, Coldwell Banker Coast Realty, Titusville Area Chamber of Commerce, St. John's River to Sea Loop Alliance, Space Coast TPO, and the Office of Greenways and Trails. Today's agenda will go as follows. So it is our final one and it is the Trail Town Spotlight. So we have three different cities that will share with us today on their process of becoming a trail town and what makes them a unique trail town and just their journey and life of embracing trails. So we'll start off with the city of Claremont, then move on to the city of Deltona, and then finally the city of Palatka, if we can get them on. Um, and then we'll follow it up with a Q&A session with all three cities at the end. If you do have any questions or, or comments, please utilize the chat box during the presentations. Also, please make sure that you are muted in order to ensure that we don't have background noises during the presentations. So without any further ado, I will turn it over to Catherine with the City of Claremont. Well, hello, everybody. I'm so excited to be with you. I'm Catherine Dean, and I have a PowerPoint presentation that I'll be putting on the screen, but I just wanted to show you my face first so you can, uh, we can say hello and give a wave. And um, here we go. So we're going to share that screen and show a couple of slides and, and hope to get you a great insight to all that we have to offer as an amazing trail town. You guys hear me okay? I know everyone's muted. Okay. I hear so, you. Catherine. Awesome. Okay. Looks like there's, there we go. So just a quick introduction. I'm the communications director for the city of Claremont. If you're wondering where Claremont is, we are just uh, west of Orlando and just north of Disney World. And um, we are known for our lakes and our hills, and we're a town of a city of about 40,000 people. And so, a little bit more about me I'm a frequent trail user. I walk it, I run it, I bike it, and I enjoy it. And uh, lastly, as you can see there, a little claim to fame uh, I did the Lake Mineola Half Marathon in 2015 with my husband, if you can see in that picture. It is my first and only half marathon, and that was my first taste of Claremont, and we used a lot of the trails for that. So it was a wonderful opportunity to get a glimpse of all that Claremont has to offer, and it actually really helped us fall in love with Claremont and move there. Okay, so there's a little lag when I hit next slide here, so we'll see if that catches up. And here we go. So today I'll be talking about the accolades that our city has received regarding our trails, the strengths that our trails have to offer, of course, the economic impact of our trails, and what's next with our trail system and what the city is incorporating into the future of the city. So let's start with our accolades. Uh, we have a video that we tested earlier and the audio is a little bit challenging on GoToMeeting. So what I'll do is put the link to that in the comments when I'm finished and feel free to watch that video on your own time uh, and that you'll be able to hear it and see it. So we'll go ahead and do that. Um, 
for my presentation. Okay, so we are a designated trail town by the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. We've applied for that and submitted all of the great things that we have going on in our trails, and we were proud to be the fifth city to receive that designation in the state of Florida. We're also nationally certified as a runner-friendly and bicycle-friendly community, and those are things that we definitely attribute to our trails. We couldn't be uh, that friendly to our athletes without our trails as a safe uh, option for them off the roads to enjoy and train and compete. And we were named uh, Florida's Bicycle Friendly Community of the Year. So that definitely had to do with our trails. Okay, so moving on to our strengths. Uh, so we're known for our lakes and our hills in Claremont. We're part of Lake County and we have many, many gorgeous lakes that people enjoy boating and um, getting out on the water and all sorts of activities. So we have two and a half miles of South Lake Trail along Lake Mineola. It's gorgeous, picturesque. Um, we also have the only inland freshwater beach on the Coast to Coast Trail. So you can see a picture of that on my screen and people love coming to lay out and enjoy it. And we also have several fishing piers along our trail. You can see one in the background of that beach photo as well. So those are all wonderful options that we have to enjoy right along our trail. Beautiful sights, beautiful sunsets. Catherine, I think we lost you. Them and prepares them for any terrain. So we used to be known as Gem of the Hills, actually. We claim to turn on our hills and celebrate that. And uh, we have paved options, and we even have clay trails in the city that are very popular and great for runners. So now we'll go through some convenient amenities. that we have to offer right along our trails that make them so appealing. We have lighting from dawn to dusk, as you can see the light poles in that picture. We also have showers and restrooms. It's a huge point for athletes to have those showers right there uh, and plenty of restrooms. We have benches and shade. We have water fountains for people. And of course, we don't forget our uh, furry friends. We also have water fountains for dogs on the ground along the trail. We have AED access. Um, I'm sorry, so we have AE, yeah, so we have access to those AED machines in case there is an emergency right along our trail. Those were Catherine, we, we, we're losing your sound. Catherine, can you? Catherine, um, can you can you hear me? Can you um turn off your I apologize, everyone. We'll get going in just a second. We're just having some technical difficulties. Oh, okay. Uh, can you hear? You sound a little better now. Catherine, do, do you have the capability of maybe uh, muting your computer and dialing in via phone?
All right, can you hear me? Let me know if you can hear me and if I should proceed with my presentation. If you could dial in by phone, I think that we would have uh, much better as, as we I'm can so make sorry, out guys. what you're saying, but you still sound very glitchy through through the internet. Okay, if you would like, I can call in and while you guys are have the slides up, I can talk. I can unmute myself while you have the um, slides up. Would you like yeah, I think that would be best. Uh, we, can, we can pause for a few minutes. Just go ahead and mute your computer and, and dial on in and you can talk through the slides. Well, while we wait, does anyone want to share what their favorite webinar was over the last eight weeks? Well, I was a big fan of the social savvy webinar that we had last week. I had some Can you hear me now? Yeah. Hello. Oh, we can hear you loud and clear now, Catherine. You sound great. Okay. I apologize. I'm not sure what happened with my internet connection, but I'll go ahead and proceed. Um, and I'm guessing that you cannot see my slides, or can you still see them? Okay, so um, we have plenty of overnight accommodations along our trail. We have Claremont Cabana that you can rent downtown. We also have branded hotels along Hancock Extension. So that makes it very appealing that you can come and stay a while and use our trails and stay in our hotels and cabanas right alongside our trail. So we have over seven miles of trail. Can you hear me? Early. Hello. And points of interest along our trail include the National Training Center, the South Lake Hospital, Special Olympics Florida Headquarters, uh, Cooper Memorial Library, and the University of Central Florida, Lake Sumter State College. We have over 80 events on or near our trails in 2019 alone. And Summer Sports is our oldest and largest U.S. triathlon company. And they use our trails all the time for amazing races. There's also the Horrible 100, which is the largest bicycle event in the Southeast that utilizes our trails. We also have a weekly free 5K park run that people love. And we just have a lot of regulars. And so that's another great use of our trails. OK, moving on to the next slide here. Uh, a couple other festivals and events that we have include Waterfront Park. We have Red, White, and Boom, which is our 4th of July event with over 10,000 people. Pig on the Pond, which is a fun barbecue festival with over 25,000 people. National Night Out, Taste of South Lake, and so many other events that are centered around our trail. We also have a bicycle scavenger hunt, a camp out along our trails, holiday bike ride, a Jamaican jerk festival, and also a ride of silence in memory of those who have lost their lives on a bicycle. And our trail system is for all ages and all abilities, ADA compliant. We have bikers, joggers, skaters, dog walkers, and we even have bicycle rentals that families can enjoy that are bicycles for two or four. And as you can see in this picture, we also have um, bridges that people enjoy going over. So the economic impact of trails, as many of you know, they increase property values on average 6%. And 
more property tax helps offset trail maintenance costs. For every dollar spent on a trail, there's almost $2 in direct medical cost savings. And trails create mobile equity, improving aesthetics and creating economic development opportunities. Okay, so our trails have changed our downtown development and redevelopment. We had 29 new businesses open downtown in 2019 And when we create new neighborhoods, we look at that trail connection to see how we can incorporate trails into our roadways because we know there's a great economic impact. So what's next? Uh, we are really looking to continue connecting our downtown core more. This is a look at our downtown waterfront district map, and our master plan is all focused on improving our downtown and revitalizing our downtown and strategically drawing trail users into our downtown. So the South Lake Trail runs along this lake that you're seeing at the top of this map, and then um, oops, there's a lot of feedback. I don't know if someone who's on the call could mute. Everyone's muted who's on the call. And we've got our master plan in motion. Um, basically, it's strategically drawn trail users. Can, you, can everyone please be clear with their microphones are muted? Catherine, do we still have you? Uh oh. I apologize, everyone, for our technical difficulties. Catherine? I'm here. Okay. It all right. Like you had to unmute me again, so we're good. Okay. Sorry, I had to mute all. Okay. And <laughs> I was trying to find That's the word. okay. <laughs> oh, no, I'm, we're good. So I was talking about our master plan, which basically is all about revitalizing our downtown, and we utilize our trail as a big part of that. And so, as you can see in the map on the screen, um, all these different um, ways of taking advantage of our South Lake Trail at the south portion of that Lake Mineola on the north, um, you can see that we have something called Legacy Loop, the Art Walk, uh, Waterfront Activation Zone, which is going to be restaurants, and Victory Point Park. Those are all new additions to our downtown because our trail is utilized so much and we want to pull people from that trail into our downtown to patronize our shops more. So part of that master plan is our Wi-Fi trail that's free high-speed Wi-Fi for wayfinding and safety and that'll cover downtown and the waterfront trail as you can see. So that's one appealing great thing um, that pinpoints bikers and walkers better using Wi-Fi than when they're using the regular cell service. We also have something we're calling Legacy Loop, which is an extension of our trail that we built into our master plan to bring trail users right to breweries, shops, and restaurants along the trail. And this picture shows we actually recently built this whole unit that has a brewery and three different restaurants in it right along that new Legacy Loop trail that pulls up from the lake and goes right by our new shops and restaurants downtown. And then Victory Point, Legacy Loop Trail, connects through our scenic Victory Point, which is a new park and stormwater drainage facility. And the Art Walk, another part of our master plan, is a public-private partnership that intersects Legacy Loop that'll pull you to the trail and that will in entice our uh, trail users to come into the core of our downtown through this beautiful brick pathway. There'll be grassy space for tents to be set up. There's going to be a new uh, restaurant uh, right along this brick pathway that pulls people from the trail. And then next, we've got Meet Us in the Middle. So we happen to be the midpoint of Florida's Coast to Coast Trail, which is an amazing victory for us. So we want to celebrate that with the gathering space along the trail that marks that you have made it to the middle of the Coast to Coast Trail. And we hope that people would stop there, take pictures, and come up and enjoy our shops and restaurants downtown while they're at the halfway point. So that's an overview of our trails. I hope that gave you a little insight to why we're such an incredible trail town with the lakes and the hills and all the amenities, showers, 
dog fountains, you name it, we've got it along our trails. And we continue to build on that success and continue to pull more people from our trails into our downtown and our connected city. So if you want to stay connected, please check out our website, ClaremontFL.gov. If you search the word trails on there, we've got a whole page on our trails with more details. We also have a monthly e-newsletter that you can subscribe to from our website, and we have a Facebook page, City of Claremont Government. So I hope you guys found that informative. Um, I can make that presentation available to you as well, and if you have any questions at the end, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you so much, Catherine. We are going to move over to Deltona. Let me switch the... Here. Good morning. Here's Deltona. Can you hear me? Good morning. I can hear you loud and clear. Very good. Well, thank you very much for inviting the city of Deltona. We have a story that we think uh, we're just thrilled to share with this group because trails play such a central role in a larger effort that we're pursuing here. So, um, just right out of the gate, I want to introduce myself. My name is Tom Tomerlin. I'm the Assistant Economic Development Director. You heard that right, Economic Development, and we're talking about trails. Um, with me in this room, and we're maintaining a, an acceptable distance, is uh, Ryan Reckley, our Parks and Recreation Director, Jerry Mays, who is our Environmental, environmental um, Sustainability Manager, and you'll see a lot more of Jerry because he is our resident wise man and he's on a video that we want to play. And we have Lee Lopez, who's played a central role in all of our trail development. And then we have our IT guru here because we wouldn't be able to survive without him, David Winterrose. So, so we're all here today, and um, we'd like to share the Deltona story. But before we get started, I think it's important to kind of highlight some things about Deltona. We're in the North Interstate 4 corridor. And um, we're big currently not seeing your screen. If you could, please, I'm, I'm assuming you have a PowerPoint pulled up. Oh, we do not have a PowerPoint pulled oh, up okay. yet. No, sorry. Okay. Yeah, so we're just we're just talking right now. Um, as a matter of fact, we do. Uh, no, it, as a matter of fact, we do not have a PowerPoint this morning. It's all video. But but I did want to set the table to this discussion, just kind of understanding what we have here in Deltona. We're on the North Interstate 4 corridor. Our economy is closely tied to Metro Orlando, but it's also tied to the coast, Daytona Beach, New Smyrna Coast. And it's a big city. If you travel I-4 to Interstate 95 and head 95 north, we're the largest city outside of Orlando and Jacksonville in that whole stretch of road, I-4 to 95 north. We have uh, about 95,000 people that reside here, 35,000 rooftops. We have two interchange access points onto Interstate 4, the north uh, part of that corridor. So we're a big residential community, a massive residential community. And um, it is one of the first master plan communities within the state of Florida. Now, what we're finding is that it was master plan back then. And some people say, well, the master plan looks like someone flipped the spaghetti bowl over and that's the road network. But but uh, honestly, what we're trying to do here with this trails effort and with our eco parks effort is to kind of shoehorn in all those amenities that a modern master plan community would have. So our overarching goal with our trail town is pretty simple, is to maximize the community and economic benefits of a comprehensive park system that emphasizes nature and the outdoors. And we, um, we basically, the trails, we can't come up with a better analogy than to refer to our trails as the backbone to a much larger ecosystem that can be organized according to the community benefits that we derive from it and also the economic development benefits. Recall that my title was an economic development. So we are taking um, trails as, as an economic development tool. So the community benefits, that's something familiar to everyone on the call, um, so no need to dwell on that. Clearly, there's recreation benefits, there's health benefits. There's a positive uh, association with property values. It's green corridors, it's conservation, it's community identity. And, um, and probably most important, and the thing we wanna highlight in our presentation today, is that it provides a linkage to our, our eco parks. So it's kind of that string of pearls where each one of those pearls is an eco park, and that trail system provides a linkage to all those. One thing about this um, entire pandemic is that Unfortunately, we can't meet face-to-face, -face, which is very unfortunate, 
But one silver lining to that, and I think all of you might be shaking your heads in agreement, is that there has been an outdoor recreation renaissance. People are getting outdoors. It's it's understood that you know virus transmission is is in the out of the outdoors. Will now be recorded. Be recorded. Be recorded. Be recorded. That the outdoor recreation renaissance that's occurring, and so so I, I do think that helps everybody that's on the call um, attached to trails. So r real quickly, economic development benefits, and I think that's really the city of Deltona's unique angle is that we're attaching all of this to uh, under the umbrella of economic development. Economic development is really all about quality of life. Um, I told you that we have uh, about 35,000 single-family residential units, and so um, the trail system and the parks that links up to this trail system is a respite, um, is a respite, I'm sorry, a respite from our single-family residential mass. Um, and our ecotourism is something we want to grow here as well, basically seeing bed nights and recreation dollars spent locally. Um, we do have a central location with respect to the River to Sea Trail and the Coast to Coast Trail. And we hope to someday achieve some spillover from the largest tourist destination in the world. Uh, Claremont clearly is, is, clear, is attached to Walt Disney World and, and the Universal Studios Complex. But Metro Orlando, um, if someone, especially let's say from Great Britain that visits here, they probably throw in a beach day or two. Could we make the sales pitch that maybe Deltona is a central place to stay halfway in between those two attributes, the theme parks and the coast? Um, so... And really, it's the unique attribute we bring to the table when we talk to economic development prospects. That's that's one of the things that we want to talk about. Is that sure we have a, we have a big, a very big city in regards to it's one big subdivision. However, you're going to be able to get attached to some kind of ecological outing fairly quickly. So with that, let me just outline the game plan that we have for our presentation. Our presentation is almost entirely in a video that we put together. And what we want to do is highlight basically two parks that are directly on the Coast to Coast Trail within Deltona, talk a little bit about themed events, and then we want to wrap up with Jerry Mays kind of telling you a status report of all this. So with that, if there's no questions, we'll just kick off the video. We're here at Thornby Park. Thornby has a lot of history behind it. It's it's not just a how can I say an empty piece of ground that someone decided to develop. Uh, it was part of large citrus plantations to call them that groves that were all through this area that were pretty well wiped out by the freezes that came through, and and the Thornby House was located here among other buildings that were on the property over the years. Uh, Thornby Park is a special because it was set aside, had many, many partners working with the city on it. Uh, the city was only one of them. We had Volusia County, which has made up the Echo Grant program. We had uh, 
Volusia Forever was part of the program. We've worked with all these groups together, the Enterprise Preservation Society, to develop this into a first class facility for the city and the county residents and for truthfully visitors who come into the city. I'll let you, if you would, please tell us a little bit about the playground standing beside us here. Yes, this was a, a, a outstanding, all inclusive, uh, accessible playground. Um, so it's definitely wheelchair accessible and a lot of the amenities. Uh, we made sure to put a nice uh, PIP, the form play product uh, that allows the wheelchair movement, has some accessible uh, swings um, and other amenities. So every child uh, have opportunity to be on a playground and actually play and interact on the playground appropriately. You know, so this is, uh, you know, this was, this was a very uh, inspiring. Uh, it's actually the inspiration. inspiration. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and that's, that leads us to, you know, also, you know, other parts in our future design. It somewhat inspired some of our design for the trail that we wanted to put in place here. Okay, so the trail and the development, now, there was a small trail here. A, a dirt trip, okay? And the inspiration, of course, from Inspiration Playground being ADA friendly was to try and build a trail, a nature trail that was also ADA friendly. Yes. Okay, so what, what we developed here is boardwalks, uh, special mulch that will support a wheelchair. There's an outside classroom that can be used. We built bridges, we built ramps. All of this for the ability to someone who is who is challenged, whose ADA needs can utilize this trail and have an experience with nature. Yes, be an easy transition from one surface to another. Come in on the concrete right here. We have a sidewalk going around and we have a boardwalk here. Let's take a few minutes and let's walk through the park. Yes. Ryan, this project was called Form Be Here, H-E-R-E. Now, the H-E-R-E stands for Historical, Educational, Recreational, and Environmental. It, it's really a great project to open up an area for folks who want to come in and, and visit with nature, uh, the birds, the animals, the, the plants, everything about the fauna of the area. We, we're developing signs that will describe the different trees, different types of plants growing in the area. We can't be, be all inclusive on that because there are many, many plants. And we're trying to keep it to where they are native plants. There are a few plants in the park that are historically non-native plants. And we'll point a few of those out. But for the most part, we've tried to keep it back to where only the native species are in the, in the park itself. And actually looking, being on top of this, this uh you know, platform, if anyone has been in this park when it was, uh, you know, just a basic trail, prior, was developed, yeah. you know, we had uneven grounds, so mm -hmm. everyone didn't have that access. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, it slopes yes. like that along here where we are. So, you know, someone in a wheelchair, someone having to use some type of assistance in walking, it would have been extremely yeah. difficult yes. for them. So this is, this is a major contribution that the city and the different groups that work with us have put together. And we have a nice shady area coming up ahead and we'll enjoy it some too. Right? At the end of the ramp here, coming from the parking lot area and the playground, one of the first things you see as you come up is, truthfully, the outdoor classroom. It's a unique feature that we put into the park that will allow science classes from schools, homeschoolers to come together and have science classes here also. Uh, Audubon uses it before they start tours of the area. They may have a tour of Thornby Park. It may be a tour of one of the other eco parks that we have, but this was a good starting point gathering around. We, we were able to obtain these granite stone benches, they were columns, okay. okay, we laid them on their side and they made great benches as far as that goes. They were repurposed and we got them from the city of Sanford. So, you know, it, 
a lot, as I've said before, a lot of people came in together to make all of this happen. And I can definitely see a class, you know, school come in for a field trip, you know, to sit down, especially if they're going to be covering nature or mm -hmm. maybe even bird watching. You know, they sit down and identify some different things. So I do understand and, and really think this is this is a hit with with having that classroom structure. And just standing here, I, I see cabbage palms, laurel oaks, slash pines, uh, palmettos, the lower ones here. So looking at this area, do we have to clear out a lot of trees? Actually, we did very little clearing in the area here. It, it was sort of a natural open area. There was underbrush, just scrub that had to be cleared out. And we tried to be as gentle with the area as we could. Even as we cleared it, there was no bulldozer came in or anything like that. Most of it was cleared by hand. It, it, it like I say, it's a unique area. The roof is, you know, is just as it was created. Trees up above us here that give us shade. So you know, it's a very, very nice area. In regards to trees, yeah, you know, I can look around. I mean, a classroom setting here. First of all, you see magnolias. You see fairly large cabbage palms, smaller cabbage palms, palmettos, uh, laurel oaks. You can see some slash pines that are very, very tall. Uh, slash pines are probably 30, 40 years old to get to that side. Over there, you have live oaks back behind us. Some very large magnolias back over on that side. There's a lot of underbrush in this area on the outside, but not on the inside. So it's a perfect area for a, a science group to come in and say, okay, let's start discussing the different fauna in the area, the different plants and the types of trees. Uh, there are books out there, you look them up, that type of thing. So there's a lot that can be learned in the area. As I mentioned before, Audubon also uses it to start off their uh, field trips on birding. So it, it does get use, okay? It it, it has a lot of, it, it was a good concept and it worked. And I'm always glad when we think of something and, and push it through and it turns out that it works. Ryan, where we're walking right now on the trail, mulch trail, okay? If you'll notice on the sides of it, it goes up. This is what's called a sunken road. Simply being, there was a road that was through here, and over the years, people walking, horses pulling wagons, everything, all the up and down commerce on it, wore it down. You mentioned horses pulling horses, wagons. Horses pulling wagons. Okay. Okay. That, that's a good point. We're talking about the early 1800s, all the way up through the invention of the automobile and its use into the area, which is the early 1900s. This road was originally part of the military trail that started here at Enterprise and ran all the way over to the Titusville area. Now, when I say military trail, it was first developed during the Second Seminole War. Uh, there was in this area of, of Thornby Park, Fort Kingsbury, which was a Second Seminole War structure fortification. And we're talking the late 1830s at this time. So the area with, you know, large trees like the oaks and everything here that go with them, all around at that time, it had to be cleared. Now, currently, it's called the old Taylor Road. Because Cornelius Taylor was the first civilian. He came in in the, I think it was the very early 1840s, 1841, 1842. I'd had to look it up. But. He and a group of about 20, 25 families came in and settled this area, okay? And the road was named after him because the produce either had to be shipped out, everything they grew, okay, and everything they brought in that they didn't grow on the, on the farms themselves had to be brought in either by boat or by the military road. And since he was the primary person in this area, Cornelius Taylor, it was called the Old Taylor Road, still known somewhat as that today. Uh, there are only sections of it that can still be found, and this is one of them. So it is an extremely historic area. And again, Fort Kingsbury was in this general area also.
Ryan, what we have here is what's commonly known as the railroad bridge. Now, back in the 1800s, early 1900s, when this was still a major citrus area, okay, you had a lot of produce that had to be taken down to the river, okay, put on ships, and then taken up to Palatka, Jacksonville, and from there, anywhere in the U.S. that, that it went. But the only sensible way was to either use wagons, which was very slow, or to have some type of a railroad system. And that's what this was. It was a narrow gauge railroad system. We surmise it was probably pulled by mules. Okay, it didn't have a steam engine, uh, which would have been very, very expensive. And looking at it, all we had here when we started looking at developing the Thornby Here project was two rails. That was it. So we said, you know, let's try and find a way to replicate, to build back the railroad bridge. Now, I, I'd take you out on the bridge and we'd stand on it, but that's always dangerous. You never go out on a railroad bridge because you never know when a train might come. Yeah, I think I'll pass. Okay, good enough. <laughs> All right, so that's the history of the railroad bridge. Sorry. Ryan, what we have here is what we simply call the bridge. When it was the original trail, you had a ditch here, and each side of the ditch was six to eight feet of slippery mud and leaves on each side, so water standing in the center of it. So in no way in the world uh, someone who had any type of disability would be able to get through this area because it was very, very hard for everybody else to. Uh, feet just spinning as you tried to get up the other side. People would throw branches into the bottom to step on so they did not have to stand in the water. So we developed a bridge that uh, came across. Uh, the ditch itself was a drainage canal. Citrus does not do well where there's water sitting around the roots. Roots were up. So they, they dug the canal down to the lake to allow this area to drain so they could plant citrus trees. And again, citrus was the large industry in this area. So you, you had the railroad based on citrus. You had the uh, Old Taylor Road, which carried citrus back and forth and supplies from here to the coast. The railroad going down to the lake here where the steamers would come in and pick up the fruit. So a lot of this area was based around that, and a lot of the changes, geographical changes in the area were because of that type of thing. So it made a nice feature. It made it ADA friendly, and we're surrounded here. If you look, you have roses back here, which are a heritage plant, and you have ginger. This is a huge stand of ginger, and you can see it blooming right now. It's very fragrant. And again, these are heritage plants. They're not native to the area, but we didn't want to rip them out because they were planted here by the early frontier folk who came in and settled this area. Large palmettos, huge pines in this area. Large oaks were coming into what was known as an oak hammock area, which very large magnolias, very large live oaks. We'll take a look at some of them. Now, what, what is this? Well, it's a good question. Well, this is called the treasure tree. It, it's, I don't know, maybe it's urban legend or whatever it was, but obviously at one time the tree was looking to be hollowed out, as nature will do on large live oaks like this, and this is one of the largest live oaks here in the Thornley Park. But the folks who lived here decided, well, if we bricked it up, Okay, the tree will naturally heal over. And you can see where it's doing that here. It used to be like this on both sides, but it's grown out along that side to almost heal itself up. But the urban legend part of it was that children would come here and uh, I guess adults, whatever like that, would hide little trinkets or something for them in there. I don't know if they watched to kill a mockingbird and scout and Jim and finding things in the tree. But you know, it leads back to that. Whether it was true or not, I don't know. But it makes, a, it makes a good tale, and it, it's carried on for many, many years. The folks in the area all know about it, 
Okay. Uh, we ask the folks not pull the bricks out. We're going to end up trying to replace some of them like that and make it, you know, back like it was to begin with when it was first bricked up. But right now, it, it's a nice feature. It's something to talk about. And we will have a sign here describing, you know, what it's all about. Amazing. through people to look at something like this dead tree actually it's a limb off the great oak here that we were just by talking about but people look at it and say why did not park and recreation get in here and cut it up and clear it out what you have to realize on something like this is this is a whole ecosystem in itself okay everything that feeds off of a dead tree and the leaves on the ground and under the bark here on the tree so it's all part of the natural nature experience. So if it's not blocking the trail, then you leave it, as long as it's not a danger to anyone. And that's what this is. Makes a great uh, photography point also. Lean up against it, get your picture taken. It does. And this is what they built ships out of in the 17 and 1800s, the wooden ships. Ships of wood and men of iron. And it was the live oak limbs that they used because they grew, instead of straight, the limbs would grow out and bow down and it made the ribs on the sailing ships. Just a point of interest. Okay, um, hopefully everyone was able to hear that okay. Hello? We can hear you. There? Uh, this is Deltona. Can, uh, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you, Deltona. Okay, very good. And, and the video went through okay? We're, we're, um, we hope it did. If you want to share the link in the chat box, that could be helpful. Okay, we'll do that. And also, um, we just want to wrap up the presentation with Jerry Mays who was the narrator, um, basically the historian on that walk, um, kind of giving a status update of what's happening Deltona-wide. But we wanted to share that with you because, like I said, our trail system, uh, our, this, this particular park that we highlighted, is literally right on the Coast to Coast Trail, just, just, a, 
just feet away. It, it borders it. So, so our whole idea here is to try to use those trails to connect a series of parks like this. And we have at least two others that, that, um, that are like that, one called Audubon Park and another one called Lakeshore Park. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jerry Mays, who you saw in the video, to kind of give a status update. And then we'll uh, wait until after the presentation from Plaka, I think, to take questions. Well, I, I'll start with, are there any questions that anyone would like to address at this time? <clears throat> okay, well then I'll go ahead and just a, a few things. Ecological tourism is one of the major items that the city of Deltona is looking at to develop our businesses here. Uh, we're very, very strong into distribution, logistics, and health services, but ecotourism is a major part of our economic development. We wanted to build enough eco experiences that we would become a destination. So with this in mind, we, we have the Lyonia Nature Preserve here in the city, which is one of the major areas that people come to to see the Florida Scrub Jay. We have Audubon Nature Park, which is on the coast to coast and St. John's River to Sea Loop Trail. We have Thornby Park, which you just saw the video, which is also on the trail. We have our upcoming Eco Village, which Ryan Reckley is going to talk about in a moment. We have just completed Blue Heron Nature Park, Phase 1, and Three Island Lake Nature Park. These are two new eco parks. So that's a total of five we have in place at this time. We have funding committed through a local self-taxing organization, ECHO, E-C-H-O. It's a 50-50 grant fund with the city. We will be developing Blue Heron Nature Park Phase 2 and Rookery Nature Preserve and Park. So that's a total of seven by the end of next year that we'll have in place. We currently have Lake McGarity Wildlife Trail and Viewing Area, which is a nature trail with boardwalks, a two-story covered viewing tower, and a nature trail. That's eight. We're working now with Conservation Florida for the development of the D Ranch Preserve, a 482-acre conservation area in the southernmost area of the city. And this will be a multi-use conservation area with trails, primitive camping, equestrian, and abundant nature experiences. So this is a total of nine that we're looking at. Ryan will be speaking about the Lakeshore Eco Village which is more or less our ground zero for this. That's number 10. And number 11, we're currently talking to Greenways and Trails on the development of what we call the Marjorie Rollins Blueways Trail, which will be on Lake Monroe, St. John's River. And it will be leaving the Lakeshore facility, our eco village, and going south by southeast into Seminole County and back. In time, we would like for this trail to incorporate all the way down to Titusville, to the southeast, and to the northwest, potentially, all the way up to Cross Creek, which was a trail that Marjorie Rollins had documented on a trip that she had taken. So th this is what we're looking at right now in the developing of a destination through experiences. We're going to end up with 11 different eco parks so that when people come to the city as eco tourists they have plenty to hold them over for one or two nights in the city plus it's the quality of life for our local residents and for the people of Volusia and Seminole counties Uh, so, so as Jerry said, we we have all those parks, and the and the trail system is really the highway to get to them. So, so as I said, kind of that string of pearls concept. So that that is the unique wrinkle that Deltona brings to the table. 
Uh, we're just going to conclude the presentation with Ryan just speaking a couple of words about what Jerry said is kind of ground zero or really the headquarters, if you will, of our trail system and our eco parks that are um, connecting uh, to that trail system. Ryan? Yes, good, good afternoon or morning still. So we are developing our Echo Village, uh, which is located right along our Lakeshore Loop Trail, which connects to the Coast-to-Coast uh, uh, -coast Trail. Um, and it, us being a trail town and that location being designated as a trailhead, uh, the idea was to develop that uh, for ecotourism, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so things such as boating, kayaking, canoeing, um, biking, having developed that for a, a potential bike shop, rental, a historical location with one of our buildings being uh, that kind of uh, a location that outlines not only the history of Deltona, but also outlines all of our other eco parks uh, and trail systems that's nearby for people to uh, look upon and venture out. Um, and we also look at that, uh, as Jerry mentioned earlier, Tom mentioned earlier, of being that uh, location uh, for tourism. You know, if someone comes to vacation, what different experiences they can come about. Uh, so we are looking for camping tree houses, tree houses for that location uh, to really, you know, give us a nice jolt uh, economically uh, here in Deltona. So uh, again, we we're looking kind of outside of the box uh, uh, from, you know, the local theme parks to something that uh, will help people get into more of their, their uh, the outdoors, as we all have to somewhat do right now uh, with social distancing and with the pandemic that's going on. So uh, we think this is a perfect opportunity to execute, uh, execute this plan and, and really move forward, um, you know, for our future. With that, the City of Deltona really appreciates everyone's attention. Thank you. All right, thank you, everybody. So we have our last presentation, the City of Palatka. Let me find Craig on here. Send it over to you. Okay, Craig is here. All right, Craig, I have sent you the presentation or I've sent you the screen. Okay. Can everyone see the screen? Yes, sir. All right. Sounds good. Good to be with everyone today. Um, again, my name is Craig McLean, I'm representing the city of Palatka and our trail town efforts. Also on the webinar with me um, is Robbie Correa, she's the uh, president of our um, um, <clears throat> Revitalized Historic Palatka, and she also serves as our Trail Town um, Committee Chair. So we appreciate her efforts with her organization and her um, personal efforts as well. Um, what you'll see in the next two images are Basically, these are images that went into a kiosk panel that celebrate our trail town and also provide um, visitors and residents an understanding of where our trail systems are, how to get to them, um, as well as the second image will show um, how to navigate through actual trail town itself to businesses, lodging, restaurants, um, etc. So the, the work that we are portraying today with the Paleka Trail Town is kind of a culmination of about 30 years of effort. Um, first started with building the um, Lake City to St. Augustine Rail Trail, which is now currently known as the Palatka to Lake Butler State Trail and the Palatka to St. Augustine State Trail, connected with the Palatka Rail Trail connector that goes through the urban section of Palatka. We modified the Memorial Bridge to have a separated trail facility as well as a boardwalk underneath the bridge so that um, um, pedestrians and cyclists can uh, navigate to the trail system and either sides of uh, US 17 Highway 100 without crossing over the highway, uh, which is a great safety feature, as well as a 
enhanced opportunity to see um, more of the river. So as you'll see in the image in front of you, um, the boardwalk is in the upper left-hand corner. You'll see our soft landing in the, the bottom left. Um, you'll see our trail system uh, smack in the middle. Uh, you'll see the pieces of our trail system, which has been part of our vision radiating out. Um, uh, you'll see the red, which is the rail trail, blue, the Bartram Trail, uh, the green indicating the uh, Cross Florida Greenway, and of course the uh, St. John's River system in blue with the paddling associated with that. Um, and you'll also see in the orange or gold color, that is the uh, Florida National Scenic Trail, as well as uh, if you follow the dotted uh, red line, um, that is the extension of the Gainesville Hawthorne Trail. Uh, which is actually under construction uh, to interlock in um, a 16-mile uh, extension. On the um, right-hand side of the panel, you'll also see the uh, highlight of the St. John's River to Sea Loop. Um, of course, everyone is very familiar with that, the routing it does take. Uh, we did put a highlight in there, the connection to the Coast uh, to Coast Trail, um, because essentially the, the vision with this is the connectivity and uh, and how our communities are connecting. On the very bottom right, you will also see our um, Putnam Trail System logo with our Trail Town logo and um, I got my screen blocked a little bit. Here we go. And uh, the uh, Bartram Trail in Putnam County. Uh, that's uh, been invited. Many of you know Sam Carr, very excited. Um, about the work he's been accomplishing. So um, that's just kind of a highlight of the first panel and the work that we've been moving along. The Trail Town was um, awarded uh, to the city of Plaque in January of last year. Uh, just like so I could take a moment to thank our partners over the years, Office of Greenways and Trails, Florida DOT, um, Board of County Commissioners, uh, City of Plaque, and the Chamber of Commerce. Um, some of our new players in our uh, trail support system, we have uh, probably about eight years old, our Putnam Blue Ways and Trails Citizen Support Organization, and that is a little bit different model citizen organization. It is one that applies its ability to support um, the trail efforts um, to the entire county, regardless of a particular tract of land. As many of you the most know, most CSOs are tied to a particular uh, trail or a particular state park in nature. Um, a lot of the work that we're doing um, has been continually growing. Now, um, Palatka has multiple efforts ongoing uh, between things like uh, revitalized historic Palatka. Um, uh, we have a new initiative for the Visit Palatka. Uh, we have an, another initiative, um, Positively Putnam, and as well as the uh, work of our Chamber of Commerce and our uh, Tourism Development Committee. I'm going to take a second here and try to shift images. Okay. Sarah, can you acknowledge that the second image is up? Yep, I see it. Okay, excellent. This is the second image as part of that kiosk panel. These are, are uh, very well professionally done, fiberglass encased, like National Park Service standard type um, kiosk panels. Um, the intent of this panel for our Placa Trail Town was to be able to show the visitors um, the connector connection to the Placa Rail Trail connector, which will take you east and west out of town, as well as um, to provide the visitors connection to the businesses and uh, restaurants and those types of things in the uh, downtown Palatka area. Um, we wanted to highlight a few things that we definitely connect to once visitors are in Palatka. We, um, the footbridge in the upper left-hand corner is part of the Ravine Garden State Park. 
Um, very scenic, a lot of opportunities in there from a paved trail system to a hiking trail system and a ravine steep uh, with spring. Um, below that you'll see uh, we have a series of murals in town. So we have a mural trail within downtown. Um, the image that you see there is actually one of the um, uh, passenger trains that uh, once arrived to Palaka from the um, west to the uh, St. John's River. Our um, bottom left-hand corner, you'll see the uh, Bronson Mulholland House, a historic house which serves as a uh, active museum. The uh, bottom right, you'll see images of our Palaka Waterfronts Park and our um, Puck Puggy Playground, which is um, kind of celebrates the the visiting and the uh, work of William Bartram. Uh, that was his nickname by the Indians, the Flower Hunter, the name Puck Puggy. Um, very neat, uh, well laid out park. A lot of historic uh, attributes and uh, different kinds of play apparatus, if you will. And uh, the kids really um, enjoy that park. It is usually slap full. And uh, you'll also see some images of things that we're known for, uh, our paddling system, the kayak, and as well as the uh, bass fishing and the tournaments that uh, we host here in Palak and throughout the, the county. So um, that's essentially what I wanted you guys to see today is um, the, the work that we've put together and pulled together for our Palaka Trail Town. Uh, some things you don't readily see um, in these images are our wayfinding signs that have been installed. Uh, we do have um, in, have installed a new series of bicycle racks, uh, those types of things. Uh, we're planning to continue to implement um, and install other features that would make um, our downtown area more accessible and usable to um, trail users. And um, that's all I have on the presentation side, and I'll answer any questions. I'll let the moderator um, handle that. But uh, thanks for including us in the, today's webinar, and um, we'll be in touch. All right. Thank you, Craig, so much for that presentation, and thank you to all of our presenters. Do we have any questions in our chat box? We have nothing in the chat, Sarah. If anyone um, would like to ask a question, you're welcome to unmute yourself now. All right, well, it looks like we don't have any questions today. So once again, thank you to all of our presenters, Catherine from Claremont, the whole team over there at Deltona, and Craig from Palatka. We really appreciate you taking the time to share about your cities. So once again, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank everyone for attending over the last eight weeks, and also to thank our sponsors, City of Titusville, Playland Brewing Company, American Planning Association, Florida Chapter, Titus Landing, Lisa Mosier with Coldwell Banker Coast Realty, Wild Ocean Market, Bike Florida, Days End with By Wyndham, Coldwell Banker Coast Realty, Titusville Area Chamber of Commerce, St. John's River to Sea Loop Alliance, the Space Coast TPO, and the Office of Greenways and Trails. We will be posting all of the webinars that they were all recorded throughout the last eight weeks. So if you missed one or you wanted to share one with a friend or colleague, that will be available. Thank you for attending and everyone have a fabulous day.